Hi, welcome back to 441 where we were talking about endurance limit. Uh, let's go back up here and we're defining endurance limit and in the book it's referred to as SE prime. This is equal to a load or stress under reverse bending conditions below which the specimen, the ideal specimen will last more than 10 to the 6 cycles. For some materials, sorry, 10 to the 8 cycles. For some materials, um, it will be basically infinite. Typically steel, brass, but for some materials, aluminum for example, it will not be infinite, but uh, you will be okay, you will last for 10 to the 8 cycles, okay. This is AC prime, but what if the specimen is not ideal? What do I mean by ideal specimen? It has to be particular size, you remember we talked about this, uh, let us see, is it here, hang on for a second, maybe it is up here, no, no not here, I showed you this thing right. Ah, oh, maybe it's here. Yeah. So remember this. This is the ideal specimen. It has to be polished and it has to be of that shape and size. That's the ideal specimen. What if the specimen is not ideal? Then what do we do? This is the R or no specimen. We can't go on testing everyone. Okay. So what we do is the following. We adjust SE prime for non ideality. Okay, so what do we mean by non ideality? One, the first non ideality is surface finish. Surface finish means remember this specimen had absolutely no scratches on the surface. It was a polished specimen. But you know, you, you take a machine part, you are not going to sit there and polish it. You will do something else. So may, sometimes you may do nothing or it may just be machine or it may be ground or something like that. So what happens is because it is not polished. actual endurance limit will be lower. How much lower? Depends upon surface finish. and turns out ultimate tensile strength of the material. So if you take a very high strength steel and you make a small scratch in it, it will turn out to be very bad for it. So the higher the ultimate tensile strength, 
the more careful you have to be to finish it properly. So, a high strength steel is like a race car. You cannot take it out down on the street and run it around because it will get bumped and, and it will crash. You have to make sure it is treated well. On the other hand, you know, if you take a, if you take an ordinary, you know, AISI 1020 steel, which is a casual steel, what will happen is you can beat the crap out of it and nothing will happen. Okay. So, uh, so you have to understand that uh, these kinds of things are really very important in terms of uh, how to think about it. Typically speaking, you do not want to use a high strength steel unless you are absolutely required. Okay. So, what we do is the following. Because of this, my SE will be K surf times SE prime. This is a number that is less than 1. This is the effect of surface finish. So, what we do is we are now going to multiply our SE prime with a lot of fudge factors. The first fudge factor is surface finish and it will turn out to be very sensitive. So, the worst kind of surface is you do not do anything. You just you just make the part and you just put it in. It will have lots of bumps and scratches and it will fail very quickly. Much faster than SE prime. The best ones is polished. The next one is ground finish. You know what grinding is? You know, you have seen those guys. Uh, this is why in fact, when you weld things together and things like that, they sit there and grind the weld, you know, to make sure that the surface is okay. So, when you do this surface finish, the most important thing is you should finish the parts where there is stress concentration. That is important because that is what will govern everything. So, it is not enough to just finish the rest of the part. It's may not actually be, it may not actually matter. But at the grooves and fillets and things like that, that is where you have to finish it properly. Okay, That is item number one. So, this is first correction. Second correction is size. How to, what is the value and how about, how about it is some random empirical formula. So, let us not even worry about it. I will show you the empirical formula when we actually solve a problem. Right now, say just K surface. The next one is called the size or gradient effect. What do we mean by that? Let us say you are doing a bending test on something. Okay, You have this and you are bending it back and forth. What is the stress distribution like? Is it obvious to you that the stress distribution is going to look like this? Okay. What if the specimen were bigger? So, what will think about it this way? So, I am applying the same stress. So, this is uh, SE, let, let us say 700 mega Pascals, and this is only 3 inches, I mean uh, 3 mm. Okay. This thing is going to, the stress is going to decrease very, very rapidly. Is that obvious to you? Because within 3 mm, by the time you get to the neutral axis, the stress has to go to 0. Agreed? So, it is going to decrease very rapidly. What does that mean? Let us say you have a nick or a scratch. It will grow through and within very short time, it will go to a very low stress region and the crack will stop. On the other hand, you take the same material and you make a big sample. Now, see what happens. I have a nick. This is 700 MPa. It drops very, very slowly which means as the crack grows, it will still see high stress. So, it will break very fast, I mean very slowly, uh, sorry, very fast in fact, because the stress does not drop. If it is a small sample, the stress will drop very fast. So, this is why it is either called the size effect, ah, shut up, it is either called the size effect 